We got geography now, Sweden. This is a big juicy episode. Let's jump straight into this. Sweden. I don't have to give much of an introduction. I'm sure you've all heard of this one. We've of scaled course. the treacherous Danish peaks of Mulehoy, stomached the ammonia flavored Icelandic Haukark, <laughs> and our wallets were viciously attacked by Norwegian prices of anything. But now it's time. <laughs> Welcome expensive. to the final boss of Scandinavia, Sweden. Ooh, it's hot. I'm all hot and sweet yeti right now. Didn't <laughs> didn't. Uh, you know the drill. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, kick it. Oh, I'm not yet excited for this oh, episode. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, Noah's back. By the way. Here we are. Yep. It's time to learn geography. I'm excited because I know quite Everybody a few people from Sweden. Get so. a Geography Now T-shirt or Geography Now merch at GeographyNow.com. Not selling out if it's your brand. Anyway. All right, you guys, this is it. Our last Nordic country. But what about your constituent? But what about your <laughs> territory? But what about me? We already did your video. I even went there. Okay, anyway, I actually wanted to go to Sweden for this episode. But at the last minute, Sweden was like, dude, we're going to close off our borders to anyone outside the EU. But you know how it goes. Oh, wait, really? It must go on. And oh, damn. Go to Sweden. That's tough. We're going to bring Sweden to us and in the best possible way with real Swedish people. I'd love to go like to Sweden. Swedes, I'm pretty sure they have like Minnesota Swedes that eat Ludafisk once a year. And and so with that, say hi to Jonas and Carolina. Come on. I didn't want to cut him off, but like, I've always wanted to go to Sweden for like the mountain skiing, like, you know what I mean? Like, not slaying, skiing and, uh, why am I snowboarding? On it. Woo! Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got two Swedes. So you guys are the real deal. Swedish, straight up, right? I of course they're blonde. Of course they're blonde. Is there any Swedish with like brown hair or anything? I, uh, I was born in Sweden and lived there for 10 years. And then my mom moved me to the enemy, to Norway. Oh, so you're yeah. half Norwegian, okay. Yeah. And I'm from Skåne, so we might have some angry people out there claiming I'm Danish, but... Um... It was LA, you guys were the best I could find. <laughs> so uh, anything you want to say to the Swedish subscribers? Nah, I'm excited for you guys to uh, learn more about your country. <laughs> Our country. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. way, where are you guys from? I'm from Helsingborg. And I'm from Shalefto. I don't now, think he's actually Swedish. You Europe, you know, like you have the Mediterranean. Hey, tomato for sale, tomato. The post iron curtain. Wait, wait, I'm guessing they're the boyfriend and girlfriend. Right? Ah, come on! <laughs> but everyone knows the further north you go, things start to get scan delicious and sweet. <laughs> Anyway, lots to cover. Let's look at the globe. Sweden lies in the region of Scandinavia in Northern Europe and is the largest of all the Scandinavian countries, the fifth largest in Europe and third in the EU. The country is bordered by Norway to the west and north and Finland in the northeast, separated by the Gulf of Bothnia otherwise between them. In this gulf, you can also find Sweden's two largest islands, Öland and Gotland. Otherwise in the south, the only other- Such so Swedish like words, aren't they? Öland and Gotland. The physical connection they technically have is with Denmark via the partially submerged and partially above ground Öresund Bridge that connects Malmö, the third largest city, to Copenhagen. I'm trying my best with these pronunciations. <laughs> Bear with me. The country's largest city and capital is Stockholm, located on the east side of, of the country. And it actually oh my god, it's, like, it's so broken up, isn't it? I didn't realize that. What the hell? With me. The country's largest city is. and capital is Stockholm, located on the east side of the country, and it actually sits on 14 islands with over 50 bridges at the drainage of wow. Lake Malaren, with over 20 lakes and countless streams. This is why yeah, it is so sometimes broken. referred to as the Venice of the North. The country is divided into 21 counties, each abbreviated by a letter or double letter known as a country code. For the EU statistical system, though, the counties are grouped into eight riksområden, or national areas, to address things like population data and so forth, but they in themselves do not have any administrative function. Otherwise, if you Aye. ask a Swede, they might revert back to the three traditional lands of Sweden, Norland, Svealand, and Jotland. Technically, there was a fourth, Österland, which was basically South Finland when it was under Swedish rule, but that term hasn't been used since the 15th century. Anyway, Stockholm is also the central hub oh, wow, of economic then. activity and transportation. The largest and busiest airport is Stockholm's Arlanda International, which, of course. like so many European international airports, is located super far from the actual city. It takes a 20-minute express train or 45-minute car drive to downtown. Oh, uh the second largest airport, Land Wait, is that normal? I think that is normal in quite a lot of countries, isn't it? The international is located in the second largest city, Yetabori, or Gothenburg, for the misguided English speakers. Yetabori actually also has the largest shipping port in the country and the largest in all of Scandinavia, taking in about a third of all Swedish trade activity. It lies on the Kattegat and Skagerrak, the shallow straits that open up Scandinavia to the rest of the world. With other major when he says these names like Kattegat and Skagerrak, it reminds me of them. Um, have you guys seen the show The Vikings? It reminds me of like names in there. 
like Oslo and Copenhagen with I love Vikings. Here, about 70% of all industry and commerce through Scandinavia happens. It's a busy spot to say the least. Right. Finally, the country has quite an organized system of roads and rail networks that more or less parallel each other. There are two main north-south highways, the E4 that hugs the entire Bothnia coast, and the E45, the longest road in the country that goes along the mountains inland from Jotaborg all the way to the border with Finland in the north. Also, it's important to note that Sweden claims to have the most islands out of any other country in the world at over 260,000. In any case, Sweden's domain what? wasn't always confined to the- Yo, wait, do, who owns these islands? Does I like, fucking like, the just the government owns or like, are they actually for sale? Like, you know, um, in other countries, you can actually buy private islands. They've got 260,000 islands, they might sell some. Have just like a house in the middle of an island, that'd be sick. Borders. For starters, Sweden, being Scandinavian, obviously have Viking history. If you know anything about Vikings, you'll know that they went places. They were literally in I the love Americas Vikings. 500 years before Christopher Columbus. And when they couldn't conquer an area, they still left their mark somehow. Even the Hagia Sophia in Turkey has runic inscriptions hidden on it. It was huh? like Viking graffiti. Like uh, Vikings were here. On top of that, in the 1600s, Sweden started to become a European powerhouse and, like many other countries, took an attempt at settling and colonizing places outside of Europe. At one point, Sweden had fortresses and colonies in the Americas, Africa, mostly in what now is Ghana. Further, which it's to blow up. Within Sweden, you even have a few micro nations. We don't have time to get into each of them, but uh, they're pretty interesting. One of them was made as a protest by an artist to protect those wooden sculptures. Anyway, the development. What? The structure behind Sweden has a lot of history behind it. Like Visby on Gotland Island, probably the best preserved wow. city in Scandinavia. The old town Stockholm neighborhood of Gamla Stan was built as a fortress to protect against pirates. Later on, one of your kings would actually become a pirate, but that's another story. In fact, <laughs> the country has 15 UNESCO heritage sites. And actually, here's fellow geography Rebecca to explain a little bit more about the top notable sites of Sweden. Rebecca, take it away. Hi, everyone. My name's Rebecca. And if you're ever in Sweden, here are some of the most notable sites. There are plenty of notable castles, fortresses and cathedrals such as Drottningholm Castle, Gripsholm Castle, Örebro Castle, wow. Visby Town Wall, Uppsala Cathedral that one was and sick. St. Mary's Cathedral. Sweden also has the highest concentration of rune stones in the world with the most famous one being Rökstena. There's also many historical Viking sites such as Birka. What is a rune stone? Like is it just a stone with a lot of like I don't even know what that Ryan is. What is that Ryan? This one being Rökstena. There's also many historical Viking sites such as Birka Viking Village, Trelleborgen, Olsala, and other sites such as Birka Viking Village, Trelleborgen. Oh, I, I just want to go there. I just want to go there. And old Uppsala. This is where Viking stuff. If you're looking for more excitement, check out the theme parks Liseberg, Gröna Lund, and Skara Sommarland. Notable I'll pass. I'll get to the Vikings. Sweden are the Vasa Museum, yep. the Museum, Fotografiska, and the Museum of Natural History. In Stockholm, you can find the newly renamed Avicii Arena. It What's that? It also acts as the sun in the largest scale model of our solar system. Thank huh? you, and I hope what? it acts as the sun. In Stockholm, you can find the newly renamed renamed Avicii Arena. It also acts as the sun in the largest scale model of our solar system. Oh, Thank sick. you, and I hope you come to visit Sweden someday. Thank you, Rebecca. Speaking of Swedish places, like other Nordic countries, we have Allemansrätten, which is the legal right to roam anywhere in nature. Have you guys ever taken wow. advantage of that Allemansrätten thing? <laughs> nice. <laughs> I mean, you just like pick berries and like, hey, hey. Yeah, um, I mean, most places are owned by the country, so you're allowed to be there. Can you just like walk in someone's backyard and be like, hey, no. Well, speaking of roaming in nature, <laughs> there's lots to explore in Sweden. Which brings us to... I actually now, love the Swedish the accent as well. kind of has their own trademark physical trait. You know, Norway has the mountains and fjords. Denmark wow. has the flat grassy farms. Finland is the land of lakes. And Iceland is basically just one big volcano. And then you... You know what? Norway is so beautiful. It's Sweden and it's like a little bit of everything. Yeah, that's beautiful. A small sand volcano in Simisramn. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Sweden lies on the Scandinavian peninsula of Northern Europe, shared with Norway on the east side of the Scandinavian mountain chain that separates them. Here you can also find the tallest peak, Kepnekaise, in the far north. This means that Sweden gets most of its river runoff from the mountains that mostly flow down into the Gulf of Bothnia, and the longest river shared with Finland being the Torne or Tornio River. 
River. The longest river fully within Sweden though being the Dalelven River. Amongst these rivers is an abundance of lakes and ponds peppering the flatter hilly Dalelven. valleys below. The largest of these lakes being Vernen and Vettern in the south. The reason Sweden has so many of these pockety lake zones and eroded rivets is because they sit on a post-glacial rebound zone. Basically during the ice age all this land was crushed by heavy ice. But after oh, the ice wow. melt, like a sponge, Sweden started to slowly spring back up again. This means every year Sweden recovers on average about four millimeters of land from the sea. In some places even more. This is why you might see extended piers from old homes that once used to be situated on the shore. The country has four what? general climate zones. The oceanic zone in the south by the Baltic Sea. This is also where most of the agriculture is situated. The continental zone is in the middle part of the country. And finally the subarctic in the north just above that. These areas have the highest forest concentration. Wow. In the also the peaks of the mountains are classified as tundra. The top 15% of Sweden lies just north of the what Arctic tundra? Circle where the coldest temperatures and highest snowfall happens. Otherwise in the south, they might not even get any snow at all in the winter. It's just cold, depressing rain. Numbers fluctuate depending on which source you study, but somewhere around or above 60... Sweden's actually... Ma it's massive, isn't it? percent of the country is forested, making it the second most forested country in Europe after Finland. Wow. It's also important to note that Sweden has April weather, or April weather, in which, uh, well... It's pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much anything can happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you mean? Well, the sun is finally out after six months of darkness. So clothes come off. Mm -hmm. We sit in the sun. Oh, whenever you see a sweet too, expect this. <laughs> Facing the sun, eyes closed. And then all of a sudden a storm hits or <laughs> snow comes or... Out of nowhere. Yeah. What? The interesting thing though, that random? That in the past was kind of not much like what they are today. In fact, at the beginning of the 20th century, much of Scandinavia was struggling with widespread poverty. However, much like Germany's Wirtschaftswunder, they had the... Hold on. Poverty. Hold However, on. much like Germany's Wirtschaftswunder... Wirtschaftswunder... They had the record autumn. I wanted to try it. This economy bursted with now industries and innovation. And today you have the largest economy and most powerful nation in Northern Europe. To explain a little bit more on the way Sweden takes what it has and flourishes, here's Noah. He's back! Well, here we are. Once again, let's get to it. Despite having lush green lands, only about 7% of the country is arable. Therefore, agriculture isn't exactly their main focus. Today, much of Sweden's open market economy is heavily based on exports, especially in the timber and mining sectors. The largest mine in Kiruna is actually so large they are currently in the process of moving the town and residents to make more mines. This is wow. how Sweden in the 21st century became the world's sixth largest iron ore exporter and third largest stainless steel exporter. And of course, lumber. The Swedes love trees so much that a long time ago during famine times, they would put crushed tree bark into their rye bread, which was actually good because the bark had lots of minerals and fiber. Go oh, figure. The lumber industry- Yeah, but would it not be like weird and hard? Like in your bread, you just... I suppose not. I suppose they're not going to... Imagine you eat some bread and you get splinters, like splinters all in your mouth. It's a huge role <laughs> in their world-renowned furniture commerce. We've all heard of IKEA having over yep. 450 stores in about 60 countries. IKEA. They actually studied that in design school. Is that but true? Everywhere in UK. It's true. Not that I do it, but here we are. You might be familiar with other Swedish companies like Electrolux, Ericsson, H&M, Saab, Scania, Spotify. And of course, the largest domestic company and only one on the Fortune 500 list, Volvo. Great cars, I might say. And oh, that, is that is, uh, that is, that is that. Until we meet again. <laughs> Thank you, Noah. Now going off of business talk, domestically, Sweden does have a pretty complex system when it comes to taxes that plays into their fiscal structure. As of 2021, their individual tax rates range from about 32% to 52% based on income bracket margins. Wow, that's, that's not even high. Other factors like corporate value added taxes, which can be up to 25%. That's high. You, them, you get the second highest total tax revenue behind Denmark as a share of its country's income. Yeah, that's, uh, you guys kind of have high taxes. Well, we also have healthcare. And good schools. And, and good roads. And we get free food roads. To the <laughs> <laughs> roads? In any case, another interesting thing about Sweden is its wildlife. And with that, here's Gary Harlow to explain. Yes, she's back. You know what? This is going to be interesting because I actually know nothing about wildlife. I, literally zero. As a Nordic country, Sweden is obviously a place wow. for cold climate animals. I love wolves. In fact, they have the third highest number of their national animal, the moose, or the Eurasian elk, after Russia and Canada. There's so many moose that they actually have to hunt around 100,000 every year to maintain population control. Killing your national what? animal because there's too many? Go Sweden! There are 30 <laughs> national parks and nature prediction zones and the most <laughs> famous being in the north lapland areas where yeah who is this guy 
Bro, he's not even Swedish. And here, Max Ox, grey he's owls, and brown bears can be spotted roaming freely. Fun fact. Reindeer have climate adapted feet in the summer. Their spongy foot pads are more exposed, which help with traction. But in winter, I'd be so scared if I seen a bear. And the hoof is exposed, which helps cut into the ice when moving. Finally, Sweden is one of the few places in the world with a real taxidermized whale. The mouth huh? used to be open for visitors to walk into, but it was closed off to the public because a couple was caught having sex in it. Speaking of my uh, closed to them. What? Finally, oh, Sweden oh, is oh, one oh, of the few places in the world with a real taxidermized with a real taxidermized whale so that's an actual whale whale the mouth used to be open for visitors to walk into but it was closed off to the public because a couple was caught having sex in it speaking of <laughs> making babies i made one myself here's a photo of my daughter uh... she's beautiful Thank you, Gary. Yeah, I remember the first meal I had in Sweden was reindeer meatballs. You guys love your reindeer. What's your favorite dishes in Sweden? It probably is reindeer meatballs. <laughs> yeah. I would say I like meatballs. grilled in the summer, oven baked in the winter. Oh yeah, and you guys know fika, right? Yeah, fika. It's funny because coffee was actually banned from Sweden like five times in the 1700s, but that's another story. To explain a little bit more about fika and the food, here's Johan and Rikard. All right, guys, well, this is uh, fika. And to explain, here is Johan. So in Sweden, fika is a huge tradition. It's something oh, you do daily. Dog. It's a part of a workday break where you kind of like gather, you sit down and you have coffee. Historically, it's been that seven types of cookies minimum plus cinnamon minimum. rolls and cardamom rolls and um, then pastries such as princess cakes and other things. Every day, but not necessarily this many sorts. I wanted to give you a cross section of what it could be. So, and then the most famous on the bottom. Wait, they do this the every day. Cakes. So if I'm going to try some, I have to have some marzipan. So many layers. I know. Wow. And Hello there, my name is Dick and I'm here to talk about some of the foods! We have kroppkakor or palt, depending on if you are from the north or the south. Sill, or as you will call it, herring. We have reindeer, pea soup, cauliflower soup, surströmming or sour herring, but eat at your own risk. All of this oh, foods can be eaten at the what it, oh. or sour herring. Wait, why eat at your own risk? Why the... What's that picture, man? Your own risk. All of this of foods can be eaten at the traditional smurgus board or smur smurgus board, basically a Swedish buffet. We also have Kallis or Charles caviar. It's a Swedish style of smoked cod roe, not that super expensive. And of course, we have knäckebröd and the traditional national dish. What were they? Sweden, crackers. Swedish tacos. Oh. Over to some drinks from Sweden. We have aquavit or flavored liquor. Julmus on Christmas and Poskmus must on Easter. Uh, glug. We have glug. And of course, my personal favorite, punch. It's made by the mixing of spirits like Arak brandy or rum with Arak tea with some sugar and water. Very sweet, very strong, and very nice. Thank Sounds you, nice. and Rikard. Oh, yeah, you guys also have something about like the alcohol in Sweden. Can you guys explain what is that? Mm, it's called the Systembolaget, which is like the Swedish system of selling heavily regulated alcohol at state-owned stores at set prices. So you have you can be 18 and go to a bar to get liquor, but you can't buy it at a store no. until you're 20. Correct. Logic. You know. Logic. Yeah. The way it goes is that Norwegian people go to Sweden to buy alcohol. What? Swedish people go to Denmark to buy alcohol, and Danish people go to Germany to buy alcohol. Huh? They all have a system. Yeah, Logic we have a system family. for cheap alcohol. So there's probably a bunch of 16 year olds taking a ferry over to Denmark. Okay. The ferry itself is a party. Yes. I've been on that ferry. <laughs> I've been on that ferry with my mom between Helsingborg and Helsingborg. Oh, and a funny story. I was told uh, when potatoes were introduced to Sweden, it was kind of like this. What are these things? Well, obviously liquor. And that's how Aquavit was born, supposedly. Oh, what's that thing about candy on Saturdays? Explain, Katarina. Uh, you get to eat candy on Saturdays. So when we were kids, we got a little amount of money. We got to run through the store and pick our favorite Candy. It's Only on Saturday? In the world. I mean, yes, good ingredients. When you come here, pretty much half the ingredients of American candy is illegal in Sweden. So. <laughs> yeah, we do that. Well, on that note, we've <laughs> talked a lot about some of your small little traditions. Let's explain a little bit more in... I asked Jagger Peep Johan to explain Swedish people and what they're like, and he described it something like this. Blonde. A Swedish person is pretty reserved. They will definitely help you, but probably won't take the immediate initiative to help you. Okay. The way I see it, it's kind of like, Oh no, I hope I don't fall. Oh, I'm falling. Oh, and I dropped my wallet. And I got the results of the test back. I definitely have breast cancer. <laughs>
can help me or like, Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You were, was I supposed to help you? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, my yeah, god. Yeah. 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 Here's yeah. Also, what are some other kind of <laughs> taboos in Swedish culture? What do you think? I guess uh, when you get on the bus, if there is another available seat and you go sit next to someone, don't do that. Just no. don't. And don't have too much eye contact. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of the same everywhere though, right? Like in the UK. If I'm on the bus, there's another available seat, you come sit next to me. Oh, hell no. No, 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 no. 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 Preferably none. Explain, what is uh, Logan Wait, Mignogna? no eye contact. Don't have too much eye contact in general. Well, Preferably just... none. Explain, what is uh, Logan Mignogna law? It's a law that basically tells you that don't think you're better than anyone. It's like, don't tell people that you got good grades. Just yes. get them and move on. But still, you know, kind of let them see it on Yeah, it's, it's definitely based on status. Logum is this word that does not exist in English. And it basically means not too much, not too little, just the perfect amount. I would say that a Swedish person is generally intelligent. Is that full of myself saying that? Nah, it's just a result of uh, our educational system. <laughs> That's right. But part of your culture, uh, Yantalon, you're not allowed to do that, right? Well, we're not allowed to brag. <laughs> no, we're not in America. So. <laughs> well, that was a discussion. Any case, let's break down the population of Sweden. Sweden has a population of about 10.25 million and has one of the oldest populations in the world at about 41 years of age on average. Wow. About 75% of the country claims to be ethnically Swedish. And this is where things get a little complicated. For the remaining 25 the Swedish government doesn't have any official statistical data on foreign background, but what we do aye know aye. is that of these people, about 2 million of them were born abroad, and about 600,000 were born in Sweden as second generation with foreign parents. We also know that as of 2020, due to the refugee crisis, the largest immigrant communities had origins mostly from Syria and Iraq, which surpassed Finland and Poland in the 21st century for the largest foreign-born communities. Yeah, we'll talk about the refugee thing later, but in the meantime... Sweden uses the Swedish krona as its currency. And we use the type C and F plug outlets, and we drive on the right side of the road. But we used to drive on the left side until September 3rd, 1967. When the... They changed it! ...trafiks was instituted. And it was a crazy time. People were all confused <laughs> to each other. In Sweden, the official language is... Bro, shocker! If, like, in the UK they changed it, oh my god. Yo, do not... <laughs> I'd be in so many car accidents. Swedish. But the funny thing is, even though Swedish originated and has pretty much always been spoken natively in Sweden, Swedish actually only became official in the country in 2009. Huh? Yeah, they kept kind of arguing about it. It was like, no, it might be seen as more difficult for international issues. It might be seen as discriminatory, maybe, for those who don't speak Swedish. God! So let's break this down. The country is called Sweden. What the f do you think people should speak in Sweden? And that's how Swedish became the official language of Sweden. We've explained this before, but the three Scandinavian countries can all more or less understand each other. If you learn one, you can pretty much kind of communicate with the others. If right, yeah, I've heard know, that. When they hear Danish, it's like, oh, hey, Denmark. <laughs> interesting. And the interesting thing is that the Swedish language has pitches. Here's geography Marcus to explain a little bit more. So yeah, Swedish is a very hard language to learn. We also have a pitch dialect. Some words look and are uh, pronounced exactly the same, but have different meanings. So the word plan, uh, it can mean a plan, like having a great plan. plan. It can also mean a uh, pitch, like a football pitch. Football How? is plan. Banan. Uh, how, 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 how is plan, pitch, field, plan is plan, huh? Which means banana, but if you pronounce it no. banana, it means the track. Thank you, Mark. Which means ban uh, pitch, like a football pitch. Football's plan. Banan, uh, which means banana. banana, but if you pronounce it banan, ban it means the track. Thank you, Marcus. In any case, on top of that, there are also five protected languages in Sweden. Finnish, Menkal, Sami, Romani, and Yiddish. Also, Sweden has a lot of regional accents. If she spoke her native language right now, or... <laughs> you don't native, even say dialect, you say language. <laughs> native dialect, I wouldn't understand a word. Say the what? most difficult uh, southern Swedish thing you can say. Okay, this is not my accent, okay? Disclaimer. Det är nämnt, men traurigt och kära rullebar. It is easy but difficult to drive a roller coaster. Wheelbarrow, but that was really good. Right? Yeah. All right, all right, yeah. all right, all right. You thought wheelbarrow was roller coaster. <laughs> Whoa. Wait, 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 wait. He's from Sweden. She's from Sweden. And when they speak Swedish, they don't understand each other. What? 
In any case, Christianity was introduced in the 9th century. Today, most Swedes, regardless of their level of religious devotion or lack thereof, are at least registered with the Swedish Lutheran Church. And like the Danes and Norwegians, they have their confirmation ceremonies at age 14 or 15. In old times, ancient Swedes and the Norse people followed the Asatru religion. You know, where Thor, Odin, Loki, yes! and the Norse people followed the Asatru religion. I love the North! I, I, I love the South as well, but the North, we have Odin, Flieg, uh, Thor, Loki, uh, Tyre, don't know, don't know these, don't know, don't know the rest, don't know the rest of uh, Freya. You know, where Thor, Odin, Loki, all, all of them are from. Otherwise, Sweden is a constitutional monarchy. Although they are mostly seen as just figurehead celebrities with almost no actual legislative power. Right. Today, the royal family is actually French descended. For what it's worth, being the largest of the Scandinavian countries, Sweden has a lot on its plate. In general, most people would say that the system works. Yes, we do have one of the highest life expectancies in the world at over 82 years. People get paid to go to schools they are accepted in. Healthcare is free for people under 18. Dental is free for anyone under 18. 23. Otherwise, there are price caps for medical and pharmaceutical services, and they are usually cheap. However, for the population, there is a bit of a shortage in medical facilities, and like most state subsidized healthcare systems, wait times can be an issue sometimes, and they follow the 0 30 90 90 rule. What's this that? rule states that a person cannot wait more than 90 days to see a specialist and 90 days after diagnosis to receive surgery unless it is deemed an emergency. This means that the worst case scenario, potentially, it could take almost half a year to get treated. This is one wow. reason why one out of 10 Swedes actually prefer private insurance, which was, you know, made available in 2010 rather than relying on universal healthcare system. Otherwise, we aren't going to fully sugarcoat this episode. Everyone knows that Sweden has seen quite a few drastic changes in the past decade or so. During the 2014-15 refugee crisis, Sweden saw a wave of asylum seekers, mostly from Syria and Iraq. Obviously, this unexpected influx in such a short time, you know, barely allowing the new immigrants time to integrate, kind of played out in many ways that, you know, made international news. Now, this is where the narrative kind of steps on thin ice because you want to be seen as compassionate but you also can't avoid the fact that statistically problems that quiet Sweden had never really seen before obviously kind of started to arise. We've seen the news features, riots, multiple cities, crime rising but at the same time... Wow, yeah to be fair um, I know a few people from Sweden and they say like some cities are really dangerous, like really bad. There's riots, there's a, a lot of crime going on. You want to be seen as compassionate but without sidestepping the issues so the question was how? Well, it's not an easy question to answer. So, like, I don't know, what do you guys think of that whole situation of the drama? You can see it as either win-win or lose-lose in many ways, because if you're completely against taking in immigrants, you're basically considered a racist. And uh, if you're trying to turn a blind eye to the fact that, you know, crime has risen a lot the last years, then that's not great either. So, I think... This Wait, so, from before, like, early in this video, there's 10 million people in Sweden, and 2 million is immigrants that's 20 percent of the population wow and then what they're saying is is they want to take them in but they've noticed a massive increase in crime since taking them in wow this is a fairly new problem and and it takes some time to really figure it out it's difficult it's and kind of yeah kind of a discussion of how to help people you know integrate into the society in general mm -hmm. swedish and society I think integration is keyword. You know, half the people are gonna argue for all the benefits of opening our country up and helping people, and those are huge as well. Yeah. See, this is kind of part of the complication of Sweden. There's always like a dichotomy of ethics and consequences within their story. For example, they've been neutral, or at least on paper, for 200 years, yet that neutrality has always kind of been tested throughout the time. In World War One, our choice not to intervene pretty much costed us the chance to integrate the Åland Islands. And in World War II, Sweden Sweden took like almost all of Denmark's Jewish refugees. However, they did trade with Nazi Germany and let them use the railroads. But it's like, what other choice did they have when they just witnessed and saw Denmark getting demolished and attacked and occupied in like six hours? It's like, do you stay neutral yet technically cooperate or fight back with no chance and lose everything? So many heavy choices with no simple answers. True. Well, that was fantastic and uplifting. In any case, we must move on. One thing Sweden definitely- They should have just unleashed the Vikings. They should. They should. <laughs> does actually feel uplifted by would be their heavy r heavy involvement in sports and with that uh art usually fills in for the sports Zlatan club, uh, and, you know, with his family so i don't know uh, noah why don't you fill in all right noah oh, you gotta you okay, gotta be art okay. this time he's gone so you know. uh yeah uh no no you missed the do and 
you go to. Oh yeah, I forgot. Sorry, but sports in Sweden. Fun fact, they actually won a half medal at the 1900 Olympics, technically. They teamed half up medal. with Denmark in the tug of war event. Yes, there actually used to be a tug of war event in the Olympics, which does sound pretty cool. Why would why would you get rid of that? Yeah, that does. To do tug of war, that'd be pretty awesome. You could just be your own team, t Noah. <laughs> there are two sports that kind of originated in Sweden, brandball and floorball. Brandball is kind of like baseball and floorball is basically like hockey with a ball on the floor. So the thing about Sweden is that each of their neighbors is kind of like their biggest rivals in a certain sport. And of course, we right. can't mention football without mentioning their biggest player, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. But depending on who you ask, many people might say that ice hockey is a national sport. In 2006, right. they became the first and so far only team to win both tournaments in the same calendar year, Olympics and World Championships. They're part of the big six that are considered the best ice hockey teams in the world, including Canada, Czechia, Finland, Russia, and the United States. Wow. Uh, that's the sports parts. Thank you, Noah. So much culture in Sweden. Actually, if you want to learn more about it, just read uh, The Adventures of Niels. He rides a goose around Sweden and learns some life lessons along the way or something. With that, here's Random Hannah with Culture Stuff. Hey guys, I'm back. Woo! In Sweden, you'll find that every region has its unique identity. For example, the Sami people of Lapland in the north, they have their reindeer herding, tents, and colt or yakti clothing. If you go to the south in Skona, though, you'll find a radically different culture of glass blowing and silversmithing, stuff like that. Of course, we don't have time to dive into all the regions, but one thing you'll realize is that they all have a traditional costume or folkdrichter. One cool. thing you will see all over Sweden is a typical redwood farmhouse. Which one has the Vikings costume? They also have the Dalahes, a wooden horse usually painted red with patterns. And speaking of iconic animals, Swedes actually like love Donald Duck, even more than Mickey Mouse. And every year during Christmas, they show Donald Duck and his friends wish you a Merry Christmas on the TV. What? Sweden also has many notable individuals in the arts and literature department. And probably the most critically well known is Anders Zorn, who is commissioned to paint numerous high profile figures. Swedes are known for their crime, fiction, drama, and literature. They love the complex, moody scenarios. Many people attribute this guy, I'm not even gonna try and say his name, as a f- uh, I'll, I'll say it. Ma- Maj- Maj- Shawala. And Pu Walu. How did I do? How did I do? Founder of modern Scandinavian crime fiction. But the number one best-selling Swedish author of all time is actually Astrid Lindgren. You've probably heard of her Pippi Longstocking series. And speaking of consumable media, if you want to learn about culture, history, and geography through film, check out Filmography Now, where we talk about people like Ingmar Berman, who is a huge influential person in the film industry, and he was from Sweden. Finally, Sweden is known for having a ton of inventions and discoveries, such as nicotine gum, the pacemaker, the three-point seatbelt, GPS, the ultrasound, dynamite, and the Celsius temperature dynamite. scale. And four elements on the periodic table were named after the town... Itterby. I give up, guys, to change vowels and sounds. And one thing you should give up on is Keith and his music segment. Take it away, Keith. Wow, Dave. so we're finally talking about this country that I have like totally not any sort of bias towards. Oh, wait. Keith got lost in that key last week. <laughs> wait, hold on. I think I'm forgetting something. Whee! I hope everybody recognizes oh, my favorite my. band right here. Let's talk about Sweden, shall we? Technically, Sweden doesn't have a national anthem. So they have this one song. It's called Du Gama Du Fria. I guess it's the de facto anthem, but not the official one. There's tons of really- No, Sweden do have a national anthem. And I, I could do it for you right now. <gasps> And then it just goes on and on and on and on and on until they like land it and make sure that they're gonna fight. <laughs> great Swedish folk songs accompanied by the Swedish nickel harp. Kind of looks like a keyboard mixed with What like the hell is that? Like Strandberg guitars. I do. Just so many great guitar players. Per Nelson, greatest guitar player I think out of Sweden. Um, there's also Ingve Malmsteen, Ola Ogland, Michael Ackerfeld. I don't understand why Scandinavia has produced some of the world's greatest guitar players. Anyways, Sweden has also a very pop-centric side. Who doesn't know ABBA? Oh I want to be a dancing queen. 
Queen, ABBA won in 1974 for the Eurovision contest. Also, now ABBA's actually going to be making a new album after doing 40 years of basically nothing. No Since way. Since then, Sweden has been kind of the pioneers of like electro pop and dance music. More well-known artists might be like Avicii, the Carnegie. Oh my god, I, I f totally forgot that Avicii was uh, Swedish. Oh my... I absolutely love Avicii. Rest in peace, Avicii. On a, like pop and dance music. More I love Avicii. Artists might be like Avicii, the Carnigans, Swedish House Mafia, Roxette. Funny thing is, as a lot of American pop songs were written by Swedes. Max Martin has hundreds of songs. Before I go, some of the bands that I really do enjoy are Opeth, Meshuggah, Pain of Salvation, Sabaton. Uh, there's Beardfish. I wish I could name them all. Anyways, you guys have a great one. Love y'all. Thank you, Keith. Any music uh, suggestions for Swedish music? Robin. She has a, she's a great musician. Benjamin Ingrosso is killing it. Well, uh, oh, and, uh, speaking of which, Carolina is a musician and uh, an artist, and uh, you can follow her Spotify at this link right here. No. <laughs> well, I will promote it. I will promote your Spotify. Is that her? Don't be all Logum or Yanto or whatever that is on me. you got to promote yourself. This is America. So if I release three Swedish songs, one English one. You want to promote anything? You have a website? Anything? No. You were in a Norwegian movie, and it got an Emmy Award. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. sick. Yeah. That's not yeah, too sick. Has touched the world in so many ways, and another way Sweden has made its name across the world is by interacting with it. So let's move on to the friend zone. Now, Sweden has an interesting way of dealing with the rest of the world. They kind of have a hands-off, unless really necessary, approach to international conflict. For one, their security doctrine states that they have a nonpartisan stance in regards to military alliances. However, right. it permits cooperation with threats against peace security with their military. Yes, Sweden has a military. Nonetheless, they joined oh, the EU in 1995, which some criticized as being against neutrality, but Sweden decided to see it as an extension of economic activity that had already been going on with the EU, and they they also hold the right to not participate in EU defense. Today, they Aye. have 79 embassies abroad on all inhabited continents. In Asia, Iraq actually has had relations way before conflict years, dating back to the 30s when members of the royal family visited Baghdad to see King Ghazi of Iraq. In the 80s, Swedish companies opened up in Iraq, trade was developing well for a while, and after conflict years, many Iraqis chose Sweden as their destination as refugees. The USA and Canada have always been close, as the US has the largest Swedish diaspora community at over 4 million people. People, most wow. Of concentrated in Minnesota, Canada having just about half a million with a huge community in Manitoba. Between 1820 to 1930, about 1.3 million Swedes immigrated to the Americas, which was at that time about one third of the entire country. And what? Today, these nations not only had a close historical bond, but in almost every diplomatic measure aside from military conflict, they've cooperated. Bringing it closer to home, Sweden is actually one of the top donors of Moldova in regards to aid and development. They set a strategy of cooperation in 2007, which gives 11 million euros dedicated to good governance, economy, and rural development. Now we go even closer to the inner circle, the Nordics. Every single one of these five nations and their territories has an opinion about Sweden, and the gossip is heavy. Finland is, of course, really close, as for about 600 years, they were actually a part of Sweden. And today, Finns are one of the largest non-Swedish communities with a protected language in pockets throughout the country. For Iceland, it's like, eh, we're cool with them, nothing against them. They talk like our ancient Norse ancestors, but otherwise, they're totally our distant cousins. Then we get to the last two, Denmark and Norway. Now here's the thing, each one kind of has a small historical gripe with Sweden. Denmark, as you know, has had more wars with Sweden than any two nations on earth, constantly right. fighting over influence for Northern Europe. They Norway have a bit of friction. that Sweden's neutrality prevented them from intervening in war times when they thought the Swedish were like really close and Norway was even part of Sweden. This was especially evident in World War II. It was like the moment of tension. Nonetheless, at the end of the day, you cannot separate the Scandinavian trio. They just get each other too well. They share too much. They have the same general Scandinavian minds. They have that Viking blood. Yes. They are truly people of the North. After the insults have been hurled, they will probably say, okay, yeah, yeah, we love each other. Denmark and Sweden, though, will probably first hug Norway before hugging each other. But otherwise, yeah, inseparable trio. All right. <laughs> and in conclusion, uh. you are the Swedes. I'm going to step out, hold the flag in the background while you speak freely from the heart. 
I want to say in conclusion, Sweden <laughs> is a beautiful country with beautiful nature, beautiful architecture, if we haven't mentioned that just yet. Yeah, and like we mentioned, if you meet a Swedish person, he or she might be a little reprehend, like a little bit, hmm, I'm not sure about you, but lead on with a smile and some love and you'll get the exact same back. With my experience so far, the Swedish that I know from my stream, right, on my Twitch, if you want to go over to my Twitch, it's right there. Um, they're crazy. <laughs> But in a good way, like I absolutely love them, but they are absolutely crazy and massive personalities to be fair. I, promise you. I like that. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for being in this episode and stay tuned. Switzerland is Woo! coming up next. Really good video though. Actually enjoyed that. A lot of information, learned a lot, which was really good. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. I absolutely enjoyed this geography now. Sweden is a beautiful country, amazing country with a lot of personality and a lot to it. Hence being a 33 minute video. Hope you all have an amazing day and I'll see you guys in the next one.